welcome to you all for this uh, Author Meets Critic session. And I'm delighted to have along this afternoon the authors, uh, co-authors of the book Planetary uh, Gentrification, uh, Loretta Lees, Hyun Shing, and up in the corner, uh, because he's being Skyped in, should be, uh, and will be, if he is not already there, he's got a big beard so you can't really miss him, is Ernesto uh, Lopez from the University of uh, Chile. Uh, the book will be familiar to you, it's been published now uh, for a few months at least, and uh, is uh, a uh, cardinal st statement indeed on the uh, nature of gentrification and the extent to which it uh, has uh, colonized and become universalized indeed. And uh, the book itself addresses the question of the theorization of it. The, the book is one of a number of outputs uh, from a, a very productive uh, set of uh, seminars that were held uh, at, uh, to look at the question of planetary gentrification that was funded by uh, the Urban Studies Foundation, which may be a little bit unfamiliar to you, but it's an offshoot of the urban, or an, out, uh, an outcome of the Urban Studies Journal, and you can see a bit of marketing that's going on uh, behind me here. And uh, this, these seminars are designed really to bring together scholars looking at some uh, uh, particular field of study, uh, obviously, and have in this particular case, they've outshone themselves in terms of uh, being uh, of their productivity. So there's at least two books and two special issues and various articles and its ongoing uh, work. So, delighted to be able to discuss this, and we've got along this afternoon uh, three discussants who are certainly are well equipped to uh, look at the field. Uh, David Lay from UBC, uh, Andy Merrifield, uh, an independent researcher but well known to you all, and Kate McLean from uh, Bookbank. So, the structure is basically uh, that uh, we'll give the authors 10 to 15 minutes uh, to introduce the book and the arguments, etc. Uh, then pass on to David, and then to Andy, and then to Kate. Uh, there'll be some replies, probably from the authors at that point, and uh, then open it up to the floor. Uh, so there should be time, certainly, for lengthy discussion and questions from the floor. Okay, so without any further ado then, I'll pass on to the authors. Okay, well, welcome. Um, I feel like I'm in some kind of weird spotlight thing here, which is a bit freaky, so I can't actually see people, yeah. <laughs> which would be nice. Um, so I don't know if they can turn them down a little bit, because it means on the stage we can't really see. Um, it's great pleasure to be here today, and I guess the first thing we need to say is a really big thanks to Ronan, who's gone out of his way to facilitate this event, to both provide funding and also some of the logistical backup. Um, so a big thank you to Urban Studies, and in particular the Urban Studies uh, Foundation. Um, so the way that we're going to introduce the book is that between the kind of three of us, it's a bit more complex because uh, Ernesto couldn't come, he's in Chile, so he's via Skype. But I'm going to start, and then Hun's going to take over, and hopefully we're just going to do a kind of uh, summary of kind of where these uh, kind of concepts came from, where the idea of the book came from, and kind of run through the book. And then really, the kind of critical moment today is actually what the critics say. It's not actually what we're saying. And hopefully they're going to be nice to us, but you never quite know. So, um, okay, so let's see where we started. So this actual project goes way back. So this has kind of been in fruition for quite some time, <clears throat> way back to 2012. And the funding that we received from the Urban Studies Foundation funded two particular workshops that took quite some time, actually, to set up. One of them was uh, held in London in March 2012. The other was held in uh, Chile in April, 20, uh, 20, April 2012. And the idea here of separating out into two locations, one which was the location where the term gentrification was coined, but also a location whereby we could fly people in quite easily, particularly from East Asia. And the other over in Chile, allowing some of the new and emerging scholars, particularly from Latin America, to have easier access to that particular uh, workshop. And it worked out really well. So the whole kind of way that this book then kind of emerged was through a series of 
workshops and then subsequent kind of work that we did with people who attended, but also actually people who didn't attend as well, because obviously not everybody was able to attend. So the kind of questions that this work, these two workshops were throwing out there were questions that kind of hadn't really been asked in any great detail before. So what was the complex geographical contingency to gentrification? And we wanted to go a bit deeper than, you know, some of the kind of basic contextual stuff, some of the kind of basic geographies of gentrification that were out there to kind of really kind of uh, dig deep. Second, is the concept of gentrification really suitable to denote the processes of urban restructuring experienced in inner city or peripheral areas in the cities outside the global north? In short, what does this concept of gentrification do analytically that others can't do better? So in other words, what was the purchase, the validity, the value of using this term to look at processes outside of the global north that looked or smelt like gentrification but hadn't necessarily been called gentrification or indeed had been called something else? And we felt that was quite important. And thirdly, we asked, is there an endo is gentrification an endogenous process that's better captured by, or is, is there an endogenous processes that are better captured by concepts other than gentrification? <clears throat> so actually, we started the project not asserting, yes, this is all about gentrification, but actually being really open to the fact that it may well not be, and that the processes we saw elsewhere may not be examples of gentrification. And that was quite important and quite uh, critical in this. And as um, Ronan has just said, we then went through a kind of series of processes of kind of writing through some of the material that we'd gathered. So we began with an edited collection on global gentrifications, uneven development and displacement that had 20 case studies, deliberately sidestepping the kind of usual suspects from North America, the UK, the kind of you know, Anglo-Saxon, global north, whatever you want to call it. We also subsequently separated off some of the work into a special issue in urban studies, locating gentrification in the Global East, which looked at the kind of East Asian case studies. And very recently, we have a special issue in urban geography that's just come out, which again separated off the kind of Latin American gentrification, specifically looking at Mexico, Brazil, Chile, and Argentina. So we got a lot out of this Urban Studies Foundation grant. So a relatively small pocket of money can go a long, long way. So when you're being told you need to always get big research grants to create things, that's not true at all, actually. You can do massive amounts of work on very little. So what's the book about? Well, certainly we set out to unpack the Anglo-Saxon hegemony of gentrification studies. And I think that personal journey for all of us was quite different. So for myself, I began that kind of post-colonial journey when I finished my PhD, I took up a position in New Zealand at the University of Waikato, which I had a big post-colonial studies kind of flavour to it. Then when I went to the University of British Columbia to do a postdoc with David Lay, I sat in, in a series of kind of post-colonial uh, kind of geography uh, courses, etc., which again kind of got my appetite going for this and started this kind of thinking about you know, thinking beyond the kind of London and New Yorks of this world. Again, for Hun, he can talk about that himself, the experience will have been different. And for Ernesto, coming from South America, again, it's different again. Um, we set out to question this notion of a global gentrification. So people had been talking about, gent Neil Smith said, gentrification's gone global. What does that mean? Does that mean it's just somehow erupted all over the world? Has it really gone global? Has anybody actually travelled around and, and done the work to actually prove that? Is it only in certain places and not other places? There was a lot of kind of ambiguity around what we mean by kind of global gentrification. Finally, the book avoids, or tried to avoid, tries to avoid colonial knowledge production, and it aimed very much at a kind of collegial co-production of knowledge. Now, that just wasn't between the three of us because not only did the three of us come from quite different backgrounds in terms of academic training um, and, in fact, specific research and interests, etc., although, of course, we had a, a kind of, uh, you know, desire to do critical political economy at the heart of that, but we kind of came together to co-produce this. So the co-writing was really critical in this book, but it wasn't just about us. It was about sharing the knowledge of one part of the world with the other and going back and forth, and 
constant kind of overwriting and rewriting, and that process took a long time. So, what, we started 2012, it's now 2016. We, we did constantly go over stuff. So I think the way that this was written is quite important too. But what we did was not simply say, OK, right, forget the global north now, we're sick of that, we're going to go to the global south, let's start from there. It wasn't about turning around the telescope looking for unusual places to go to and doing that kind of adventure geography tourism. It wasn't about completely ignoring the usual suspects and doing comparative urbanism without the Western contexts. What we tried to do was to place cities, or to end place cities, on a level analytical playing field. So we wanted to, put, to kind of see cities as all having a value, but a value that's perhaps in a different way. So you don't have this kind of hierarchy of cities that Jenny Robinson and other people have talked about. I think having a multicultural research team where we all had different linguistic kind of backgrounds was really useful, because obviously I, I'm, I can't read or speak Spanish, but I had bits of French and bits of German. Hun can speak and read both Mandarin, Korean, etc., etc. So actually those language competencies were really important as well. Gentrification theory, we wanted to show as both located but also dislocated. Okay, so we wanted to kind of traverse that binary between location and dislocation. That there are universal possibilities and also contingent factors that account for different variations in different places. And of course, at the same time, what was interesting is David Lay went to Hong Kong and has been doing a load of research for um, some of his own uh, work out there on gentrification and other things. And again, we were really interested in the way that he'd kind of brought that kind of post-colonial flavour. So he talks about um, the kind of overreach of gentrification theory, you know, going to Hong Kong and suddenly being in a city where gentrification didn't have the same coinage or purchase as it does perhaps in London or New York representing an example of Anglo-American hegemony that asserts the primacy of its concepts in other societies and cultures. So we didn't want to do that. We didn't take gentrification and say, right, we're going to go and find it globally. We're going to prove it's global or not. That was really not what this was about. Now it's over to Hun. Thank you, Loretta. Uh, what I want to kind of explain in the next few minutes, actually not uh, going to talk more than probably three, four minutes, is kind of trying to understand uh, or explain the kind of background a little bit more about uh, the kind of issues that are very important for our writing of this book on planetary gentrification. So we are definitely um, influenced and, and, and benefited from the readings of Annie Lefebvre and also uh, some of the writings of Andy Merrickfield when you were discussing the planetary aspect of gentrification. And for us, the planetary urbanization is coming as a way of indicating that you know, it's not necessarily urbanization basically ch uh, changing every uh, uh, space on the planet into something concrete or something urban. We, for us, the planetary urbanization uh, kind of thinking is uh, what it tries to actually emphasize the, kind of, uh, the, the intensifying relationship between the urban and the rural and how the urban and rural relations are being reproduced in the whole, kind of, uh, uh, in the whole context of how the world is moving towards in a greater intensification of urbanization, urbanization. And here we try to emphasize the importance of the secondary circuit of uh, the built environment, especially how the real estate has become very important in uh, many parts of the world. So what we try to see and try to argue is you know, this, kind of this, uh, this emphasis on the secondary circuit of the built environment, which includes the investment that goes into the productive uh, the productive investment in infrastructure or the expansion of the fixed asset, and at the same time, the whole commodification of space and rent extraction becoming very much an influ influential process in many parts of the world. But at the same time, how, you know, in, in order to understand how this is actually uh, manifesting itself in urban space, we also try to understand the whole dispossession uh, that takes place in the course of promoting such investment. So for us, the whole, you know, the relationship between productive investment in the, sec in the built environment in expanding the fixed assets, as well as the whole commodification of space, do create very unequal uh, geography uh, of exploitation, and but in a very, in a very, in a different way and uneven way. 
So what we try to see uh, in this relationship is how gentrification actually comes out uh, uh, to produce a particular relationship in urban space and try to see how, you know, in a broader context of this position, gentrification can be uh, embedded. And this also means that when you are trying to, um, uh, you know, they emphasize the planetary characteristic of gentrification, it's not necessarily every urban process becomes um, um, swept by the gentrification pressure. What we try to emphasize is more kind of relational thinking in the way Doreen Messi was trying to emphasize. Some places may be seeing the rise of gentrification as a dominant process. Some other places will see gentrification as still remaining marginal. But what we are trying to emphasize is how these different urban processes, one of which is going to be gentrification, how they speak to each other and how they, how, how they interact with each other. And also in the same way, how a certain space which is becoming more uh, um, exposed to gentrification pressure is also going to be producing a relationship with other spaces which are less uh, exposed to gentrification. This also means uh, calling out the researchers, you know, gentrification researchers, to be, um, uh, to be paying more attention to other non-gentrification processes and, and relations uh, that may exist in, in, a lo in a given locality and try to make sure that they actually acknowledge what's going on beyond the gentrification scope, but also try to see how these two, uh, different processes speak to each other. It's also you know, uh, um, a call to non-gentrification researchers for them to understand there's a kind of important emerging in a, the uh, process that is built on the increasing emphasis on how real estate becomes very much an important area of asset accumulation and creation of inequality, and how that becomes very important in the understanding of those localities, which may not have, have seen gentrification as becoming very dominant. So it's kind of a, in a way for us to uh, uh, call out to all the researchers working on gentrification and non-gentrification processes to be able to have more relational thinking. And that kind of takes us to the final slide for today, well, as far as uh, our introduction is concerned, the kind of table of contents. So these uh, eight chapters were, in a way, written by three of us. And a lot, quite a few people who are uh, aware of our book uh, ask us how the actual writing process uh, was conducted. So in a way, we all, what we tried to do was uh, each chapter was uh, initially written by one of us. And then it was sent to you know, the next two people you know, to go through extensive rewriting, editing, um, uh, and deletion of some of the you know, redundant ideas or addition of some new ideas. And then put, all put, uh, came together to produce a more coherent style of writing. So I think I'll leave it there uh, and uh, hand over to our critics. Thank you.